You killed me two years ago to this day, but I've returned from the depths of the nether realm to avenge my death. Here's your look on McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat 11 in the shadows, Scorpion. From McFarlane Toys comes the latest addition to the Mortal Kombat line of figures. This 7-inch scale Scorpion figure features 22 points of articulation and a high level of detail based on his looks from the Mortal Kombat 11 video game. Before we get down to the review of the In the Shadows version of Scorpion, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall the figure stands. It's strange, actually, that the packaging only lists this as Scorpion, but this is a repaint to the one that we have gotten before. I'm going to stop the tape measure right to the very top of his head, right there. According to the readouts, In the Shadows, Scorpion stands 7.027 inches. I know that's rather exact. That's what I do here. Switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the figure standing almost 18 centimeters, 17.8, again, to be exact. Showing off Scorpion with some of the other figures we've already had a look at. There he is with strung over his shoulder, Shao Kahn, and strung over his shoulder, Liu Kang. I feel if Scorpion needs to fit into this over-the-shoulder club, he's going to have to probably take one of his weapons and strung it also over his shoulder. But to give you an idea of how Scorpion stacks up with the other figures, he's clearly shorter than Shao Kahn. There's yet a figure so far in this wave that have meet the same height requirements as Shao Kahn, but he is about the same height, I would say, as Liu Kang here to his left. Boy, I wish I could be part of the Strung Over the Shoulder Club. To come included the accessory-wise, to come included with the In the Shadows version of Scorpion, he comes with the same, in fact, display stand that we've seen already countless times over. Both Shao Kahn and Liu Kang both sported the exact same display stand. Nothing has been changed here. Same Mortal Kombat logo down below. Same singular peg at the top corner there that could attach to the underside of, in this case, Scorpion's one foot, or technically both feet. We'll see in a second. Basically just a regular display stand. Nothing really new to report there. He does also come with the exact same accessories that have come included with the other versions of Scorpion, which I do want to stress again. Like, this is just a repaint of that other Scorpion that we had gotten before. I think by now this marks either the third or fourth time even that we're getting this Scorpion mold. Just, again, slightly different tweak on paint. But he does come include with the same exact accessories and is these sheaths that, of course, will hold and house the blades that come include with the figure as well. I have some serious issues when it comes to these, and let me talk about that right now. When I got this out of the packaging, the one end of the sheath, you can probably see it right there. See the exposed plastic? This was stuck to the tape, and I didn't realize that when I took this out of its plastic prison. It ultimately resulted in that plastic snapping right off. And I thought perhaps I had pried it too quickly, and maybe I wasn't careful enough. But I'm finding that the plastic that they're using, I don't know if it's specifically this one right here, but the plastic isn't very good at all. One of the other things you can see right there, there's already a considerable stress mark right at the very top of one of the pegs that attaches to the side of Scorpion's sashed belt. And I, again, I was very careful with these, and yet it just seems like, I don't know if it's just a combination of the molding that they used or just the, the kind of plastic that they're using, but these pegs aren't very good at all. I'm going to do my best to plug this into place, but I can tell you well in advance that I don't even think that this is going to survive another plugging into the side of Scorpion. So I want to stress this, be very careful when you are plugging these into the side. If you don't even plan on displaying Scorpion with the sheets, then... Whatever I'm saying really doesn't matter anyways. But let me just show you where they're supposed to go. He also has a smaller version of that, which, knock on wood, has not had any issues so far. I suppose maybe I should probably tell you about the swords before we plug the, these into place, because I really feel like that one peg is going to break very quickly. He does also come with two variations of sword, one longer version katana, and a slightly smaller variety of that. The handles are slightly different from one another, still using a black molded plastic, Possibly I'm thinking even the blades, maybe the whole blade itself is done in a dark gray plastic and then they painted it off the hilt. That probably sounds a little bit more closer. It comes with, like I said, two versions of that and those can be housed inside the sheets. Obviously the smaller one is going to go into this one and the larger one, if anybody has read Goldilocks and Three Bears, you sort of know how it works. This longer blade is going to slide in place like this. 
Okay, so let me show you where these are supposed to go. You pick up the figure, bring his arms up. You'll see that he has three pegs right here. One, two, and three. The larger one, unfortunately with that broken peg, it's supposed to go into this slot right here. Uh, yeah, see, it's not even, it's not even going to hold it. It's not even going to hold it. The idea, though, is that this peg right here should go into that slot, and this peg right here should go into this side right here. I just want to remind again everybody, the viewing audience, that I've barely applied any little bit of pressure on this. I was very careful, as I tend to always be when it comes to looking at these figures and their accessories. But that peg, I don't know, it's just not a very good plastic at all. The last sheath, then you're going to go ahead. You know what? Let's see if I can get that in a little bit more in there. There we go. Nice, satisfying snap. Snap is probably not the best word I should have used. Snap is probably not the best word I should have used. And then we're going to go ahead and take the other sheath, and that just plugs into place like that. So that's essentially what you're supposed to get. Again, it's really heartbreaking to think that, again, for what little uh, pr prying uh, pressure, I couldn't even spit it out, for the little bit of pressure I applied to that, that shouldn't have broken as quickly as it did. And there's no way that that's going to stay in place. One good thing, at least for it, is if I decide to display him, I've got one at least backup peg that's located on the back, and that seems to be more than enough to keep that one in place. But that should not have broken as quickly and, in, and easy as it actually did. But at least he does have, this is how you display the swords on the side of Scorpion. Go ahead and just very carefully remove this. This is actually what caused the break in the first place. Just very carefully removing it. And then that one peg, I just noticed the stress mark right away, and I thought, it's done for. It's going to break very carefully, though, taking that off and putting that to the side. Scorpion, of course, couldn't be Scorpion as well without his chain hook, as you can see right there. It's not so much a hook as it is a spear. And that, of course, is just attached, similar to the older Scorpions that we already had a look at. Same, same application. It's basically just a spiral bit of plastic you can put on either this arm or you can put it on this arm. You know, have to choose one because he doesn't come with two of these. But all you have to do is just feed this around, literally just snake coil this around his arm like that. And then from there, you can just feed it underneath. I like to kind of feed it underneath and then just have his thumb attached to it. Kind of keeps it a little bit more stable and in place. Like you say, it's not going to be going anywhere. Again, if you wanted to have it on this side right here, do that by all means. Knock yourself out. So it does come with those as well for the accessories. Really disappointed about that plastic. I'm going to put that to the side. Let's get a closer look. And in the shadows, Scorpion, I'm going to reiterate it only one other time that this is, again, a repaint for the ones that we got before. And the same case actually will apply to Scorpion. It seems like he's really triple dipping or quadruple dipping some of these Mortal Kombat releases. Again, you could argue the point that the skin colors change. So, yeah, it would be a valid opened area for them to start producing more of the same figure. And I guess, yes, if you like this preferred coloring of uh, palette for Scorpion, then the In the Shadows actually has a decent looking look. Basically just, again, the exact mold that we got before with some nice refreshing silver that's been added not only to his mask, but also to the side shoulder armor pieces as well. And really, he has a lot of silver everywhere. The head sculpt is good. I prefer my Scorpion to have a little bit more yellow and brought into this, but I do think the silver works quite well. The outlining done around the eyes is also top-notch. Really, I was always a big fan of the sculpting on this one, even though, again, this is just a different coloring, it does still work extremely well. No, the hood is not removable. No, the hood cannot drape down. Actually, it's molded to the rest of his face. Paint is very clean, again. I don't know if I had done the review of Shea O'Connor and mentioned it, but I'm sure I've mentioned it several times already, probably at nausea, that really like the paint on all of these McFarlane figures are really good. It's a shame. Yes, there are maybe a few little QC issues, the sheath again, but really like the coloring, the paint on these guys have always been really, really good. Now, in this case with Scorpion, there's a lot of layers on layers on layers. He basically just has a bare chest underneath this, which I can't help but think is the same chest that he used for Liu Kang, McFarlane's team, of course. And then, of course, they put the robe over top of it, which is made of different layers. The gray underneath there, and then the darker black done over top of that. And again, this is very slightly bendable, slightly flexible plastic, but very much rigid. I mean, like, you wouldn't be able to remove it or take it off or anything like that. Detailing done very nice on both the front and the back. You can see right there. Some nice scroll stitch work on the side. 
I mean, these figures are always really sculpted well, and Scorpion here is no exception. Silver nicely done on the band of uh, the gauntlets, as well as the front skirting here, some additional gray that's added into the mix. Get a little bit lower down. Of course, he's got the shin guards done all in silver. I know basically what I'm stating is all the same things that you guys can be looking at, but I'm really, again, really happy with how the paint's applied to these. Things like this normally could be problematic. Maybe other companies you may have seen like paint finding its way off of this part of the mold and finding its way onto other areas. But I have real no complaints at all when it comes to the paint. Any complaints I could make would be on the quality of plastic maybe for the sheets, but all the rest of the figures done exceptionally well. Man, it's just disappointing about the sheet though. As for the articulation here on Scorpion, his head rotates the same as the earlier figure that we had a look at. Somebody I'm sure will be also asking, can you remove the face? Well, no, you can't. Actually, it's sort of strange the way that they've done the face. As you see here in, uh, when we're looking at the articulation, you kind of bring the face up. It seems almost like it's a separate piece altogether. I feel like you could probably even just pull this off completely if you wanted to. It literally is just tucked inside of his hood. Though even though I said earlier you can't really remove the hood, sort of the opposite of that, it seems like you can remove the face, which I guess is maybe one of the reasons why they could probably get more of the mold. They could just remove the face off and put another face in there if they wanted to. But the head does rotate back and forth. It hinges up and down. Just got to be careful that you don't take Scorpion's face off in the process. He does have an upper torso ball joint, not restricted at all by how much extra sculpting is actually on here. The arms hinge out very comfortably, no issues there bringing that out to a full 90 degree angle bend. You can bring the arms forward and back. There will be a little bit of a hiccup when it comes to bringing the arms all the way around, just simply because he's got all this additional sculpting of the shoulder pad area. But he does have a swivel in the bicep, double hinge on the elbow. Hands rotate all the way around, that's fine. No issues there. Legs split out. And unlike the shoulders, you can see the skirting on the lower half of the figure stays completely out of the way. It's a softer plastic and the way it's tabbed, it's tapped up here. It's not tabbed lower down, so it doesn't restrict, like I said, moving the legs forward and back this way. The legs go forward and back. Speaking of forward and back, the legs go forward and back this way. Um, he has a swivel basically just the way it's been assembled. You can swivel at the top there. He has a double hinge on the knee. Um, lower leg also does rotate, so this is technically a separate piece than this. You can see right there. Double hinge on the knee. And of course, when it comes to his feet, back and forth, ankle pivot moving back and forth this way. You can rotate Scorpion's legs. That would break, I'm sure, and shatter his ankles. You can rotate that all the way around. And yes, he does have the same toe articulation. Going back to a point I mentioned at the beginning of this review, we're going to go kind of full circle on this. He does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet, not just one, on both. So yes, if you do want to you make use of a display stand, you can definitely do that with Scorpion. But I find like the figure, like all the other Mortal Kombat figures we looked at thus far, doesn't seem to have a difficulty standing. Things breaking, of course, will be an issue, but standing certainly isn't one of the problems I have with this particular version of Scorpion. Nobody really wants to have a broken figure. I don't think anybody out there has the mindset that, yeah, I want to get a figure home, take it out of the packaging and have something break on me. That really does suck. It hasn't happened too often for me, knock on wood. I've had a pretty good track record, but I can tell you it gets a little bit more complicated when it gets to reviewing these because if you break something like an accessory or you break something like a limb, people just make the assumption that you were a little too hard on the figure. Why were you pushing the peg so hard into the socket when if you were just pushing it a little bit more lightly, this sheath peg probably wouldn't have broke? Well, actually, I will tell you, though, I was very careful putting the peg in place because I didn't think it was going to break. The plastic seemed pliable enough, and yet when I pushed it in the first time, it worked fine, took it out, I pushed it in a second time, and that's when I already noticed the stress mark developing. Sure enough, that only had to happen one other time before the peg just cleanly came right off, and you saw it in this review, and that's a bit of a bummer. Luckily, I still can rely on that other peg to keep the longer sheath still attached to the side of Scorpion. I don't even know at the end of the day if I even want to display this scorpion with the sheath attached to his leg. But yeah, it sucks. It sucks to have something break like that, especially if you really want to have it on display pristine and exactly the way it looked when it was inside the packaging. This would be a, certainly a case as well if you've already picked up this scorpion before. Maybe the idea you don't want to pick up another recolor of the same figure that was already released years ago or probably like last year or so. The In the Shadows Scorpion pretty much gives you the exact figure that we had gotten before. Now, possibly even the third or fourth time around. 
This one now gives us the silver accents on the mask, unlike the ones that we had gotten before. I don't mind the In the Shadows version of Scorpion. I still like the OG colors myself on the original release, but I think the silver works pretty well on the figure. The figure is well constructed and has the articulation that the original release had before. Just again, I don't know what happened with that peg. Maybe the plastic is different. Maybe the hole wasn't as wide as I thought it would be. But something happened along the way from point A to point B, and it resulted in that peg breaking off. And boy, does that ever suck. What do you guys think of this scorpion here? Specifically, the In the Shadows scorpion, which again, I know they have to really want to, they want to save costs. I get that. I understand that. But nowhere on the packaging does it actually say In the Shadows version of scorpion. You'll only really know that if you go to pre-order this guy online. Strangely enough, most places that I've seen this guy posted online, I think have the release date of him for March. And yet, sure enough, I was able to get this guy a little bit earlier. Not really sure why. But this guy is available. I think most online sites have him for March. But if you check around to some places, I end up getting this one from Command Store, CMD Store.ca. They had already the stock available. So I don't know. If you guys want to get it that way, you can head on over to their website and order the Mortal Kombat lineup right now. That also includes the Liu Kang. And that also includes the pretty cool looking Shao Kahn that we've already had a look at. But what do you think of this figure? And of course, for your video question for today is, would you rebuy an existing figure that you already have in your collection if it means just a slight different repaint? Are you somebody that likes to buy repaints? Or, you're, or are you somebody that just likes to get the OG figure and that's it? You don't really want to spend the money to get any more of the exact same figure. Let me know down below in the comment section. Also, if you're new to this channel, and you're digging all the content you're seeing, even though technically I did do a little bit of a break. I really like to think my track record is generally pretty good when it comes to figures staying together, not being broken. But let me know down below in the comment section if, again, if you've had any issues with your figure breaking off. Maybe there is something across the board when it comes to the sheets for Scorpion. Maybe I just had luck the first time around, didn't have so much that luck this time around. But if you are new to this channel, nonetheless, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below, turn the bell notification on. And yeah, by all means, come back to this channel. We always do stuff. Lots of stuff always coming your way, guys. Lots of stuff coming your way. Of course, we're still going to be looking at Sub-Zero. His review will be lined up as well as a whole bunch. You can't see it. I'm looking at a whole pile of stuff I still got to get through. A whole bunch of McFarlane toy reviews lined up and coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do. I'll see you guys next time.